Hey everyone, it's Carissa Wiley at sprinkledwithglitter.com. Thanks for joining me today. Today, it's all about the celebration. We are celebrating Pink Fresh Studios' ninth year in business, and they have a fabulous new release, including this beautiful ribbons and balloons stamp, stencil, and coordinating die set. I absolutely love it. And we're gonna do kind of a no-line effect today. It's not technically a no-line effect because I'm using some Misty Coast ink to stamp these balloons onto some white cardstock. Now I'm gonna show you how you can take this stamped and stenciled image and really kind of customize it because this stencil and stamp was designed with some ribbons trailing down from these balloons, but I decided I didn't wanna use the ribbons. So as I use the stencils over the top of this stamped image, I'm going to skip the portions that include the ribbons. And when the die cut die cuts it out, it's going to include those ribbon pieces and I'm gonna show you how to kind of fix that as well. I'm starting out with some peach fuzz ink and blending a couple of these balloons here. I'm using my larger brush to go over the large area of the balloon. And then I'm gonna use my half inch blending brushes from Pink Fresh Studio to add quite a bit of shading and depth to the bottom of these balloon areas. And I think those half inch brushes are really nice because you can really concentrate some color into some small areas. And you can also control the areas that you're blending in. So if you only wanna blend a portion of your stencil with an ink, you can do that with these smaller brushes as well. Now for this balloon at the top, I'm using Coral Reef ink. I know, no surprise there. <laughs> It is one of my favorites after all. And I'm doing the same thing with that detail blending brush, adding some shading along the bottom of the balloon. And then I kind of go over the large area of the balloon again, just to kind of blend out any lines that I might have. Now, because I'm using these smaller blending brushes around the florals, I can avoid ink blending over any of those ribbons that may be included on any of these stencils. And I can also just blend various little flowers in the color that I choose. So if I don't want a particular flower to be the same color as everything else on my stencil, these detail blending brushes really allow me to kind of get picky with where I put my ink. Now, once again, I'm using the Coral Reef ink here, but I'm kind of going a little bit lighter with it. And you can see I'm using this detail brush again to bring in just a little bit of orange ink on some of these smaller florals that's on the stencil here. Now, I decided not to show you all of the stenciling today. I'm just lining them up and adding the color. But this final stencil, I'm actually going to lay it in place and use a white gel pen to add the glare on the balloon. Now you could use a pigment ink instead or even some white acrylic paint if you wanted to or any sort of glitter gel or something like that. I chose to use the white gel pen today. Now I've gone ahead and lined up the coordinating die with my stamped and stenciled image and you can see that the ribbons are actually included on the die cut as well but I am going to take my scissors and just fussy cut around the bottom edge of these florals, kind of trimming away those ribbons that are included on the stamp and stencil, or I should say just the stencil area. And that's gonna give me a little bit different look to these balloons. So you can kind of change up the look of this stenciled image here. Now I did want some strings on this, but I wanted to use some actual gold thread for my strings. And you can see as I'm fussy cutting here, I'm just actually turning the paper more than I am my scissors. And that helps me get a really nice line. I'm just going slow. It didn't take that long to do this. And now I have something that will allow me to add my own gold thread to create the strings on these balloons. Now for the background, I'm gonna use the new Rosettes die set. I'm die cutting it from some various colors of cardstock and I'm using my new dual tipped embellishment tool to poke out all those extra chads. I don't have to worry about it stabbing me <laughs> because it has that nice ball tip on it. Now here's that gold thread that I'll be using for the strings on my balloons. So I'm just cutting off like six pieces because that's how many balloons there are. 
And then I'm going to flip my stamped and stenciled piece over. And I'm gonna add some double-sided tape on the back of this. This is just some score tape. You want something kind of heavy duty. And I'm gonna remove the backer from that score tape and then just press that string right into that double-sided tape. And that's gonna kind of hold it in place. Now, if you wanted to add a second kind of um, die cut over the back of this to hold them in place, you could. But I'm gonna add some foam adhesive on the back of this die cut. So that will also act as another way to kind of hold those strings in place. And you can see the really fun effect that that gold string adds to this balloon cluster. Now I love some good wild strings on the bottom of balloons, but I know not everybody's for that. And there are six of these strings here. So I decided to pull them all together and tie a little knot in these strings just so that they were kind of contained a little bit more not all going their own way on my card. <laughs> and I'm just kind of adjusting the knot exactly where I want it. And you can see I have a couple of those rosettes cut out of some vellum as well. I'm gonna change that up here in just a minute and use a variety. For now, I'm gonna work on my card base. And today I thought this would be a great opportunity for a mini slimline card. So I'm cutting my cardstock to six and a quarter inches by six and a half inches. And then I'm going to take, and along that six and a half inch edge, I'm going to score at three and a quarter inches. So this is going to measure three and a quarter by six and a quarter inches when it's finished. And it's the perfect size card for these balloons, but it's also perfect for cash and checks and that sort of thing if, if y'all still give those things. <laughs> Now I have a couple of the banners from the Basic Banners Celebrate Stamp and Die Set. I've stamped and heat embossed that Hooray banner there. I actually did the entire grouping of sentiments and just chose that one. And I've layered it up with a layer of glitter cardstock as well as vellum and just kind of staggered them all together. I'm adding my rosette die cuts onto my card base using some liquid glue, keeping that kind of flat because I am going to put the balloons over the top. And then you can see I have that single rosette die cut from some vellum. Now I decided to add a little bit of gold splatter to this card. It was something I was kind of doing that day. <laughs> I don't normally do the whole splatter thing because it makes me a little nervous. Um, but today I'm using some gold watercolor, putting it on a block and just kind of splattering it onto the background of this card base to add just a little fun and festive look, a little bit of sparkle and shine to this otherwise kind of plain background. And then I'm going to pop up my balloon cluster right over the top of those rosettes using some foam adhesive. And I'll add my banner greeting right along that bottom right edge of my card base. Now a card like this would not be complete without a little more shimmer and shine. So I'm using my favorite champagne glitter drops. I'm placing them on with that dual tip embellishment wand and a little bit of liquid glue. And I went back and forth about whether or not I wanted to trim off the excess along the edge with these rosettes. And eventually I just decided to go ahead and trim off the excess. And I really like the way that that kind of cleaned up the card just a bit. And that finishes off my card for today featuring some really fun ideas for customizing a stamped and stenciled image. It's always fun to kind of change things up on the way an image was intended to be stamped or stenciled or used and kind of get some more looks out of it, which is exactly what I've done here today. Now, as always, you'll find links to the featured products used in this project in the description at YouTube. So if you're looking for something in particular, be sure you check there. Are you brave enough to cut up your stamped images? Let me know in the comments below. As always, thank you so much for stopping by. Thanks for watching. I hope you enjoyed this card project and I hope you enjoyed this video. If you did, be sure to give this video a thumbs up and don't forget to subscribe and turn on the notifications here so you don't miss any of the fabulous card making and video tutorials shared here. Thanks again for watching and until next time, I hope you have a fabulous day.